Hello, Foundation members. My name is Sterling. I'm from Sterling Yoga and Wellness Center, and I'm here today with Kristen Morgan. She's going to introduce herself. Hi. Many of you know me from the Pittsburgh Walk and Roll. I've been the walk chair for eight years now. Thanks. And that's how she's involved with the foundation. So a lot of you know her. I'm involved with the foundation because I started teaching a yoga stretch warm up during her walks. And then last year, um, my husband and I were in charge of your Zen Den um, at the symposium in San Diego. And we we're gonna be doing the Zen Den this year at, in the DC um, symposium. So that is how we're involved with the foundation. Also, um, we're excited to be here today. We are going to do the benefits of a chair, just a light chair yoga class. But like any exercise routine, you want to make sure that you talk to your physician and make sure that it's okay. But please tell them that we're doing seated stretches. That is not you just don't go in and say yoga. Just say that you're doing a chair yoga class. Make sure they understand what you're doing. I'm a therapeutic yoga teacher. So we do a lot of things based off of um, alignment and the body's um, internal systems. And so, you know, you wanna make sure that your doctors know what kind of style you're doing and you should always check with them. But also remember that you're always just to be safe, start off slow and build up your movement and strength over time. It takes time. And so you don't have to jump in and do everything. You can do a couple of the things we show you today. And as the time builds up, maybe by the time I see you in October, We'll be doing the whole routine, okay? All right, so today we're gonna um, start with talking about the benefits of yoga while we're doing yoga. That's the best way to do it, I think. And Kristen too, I believe. So we're gonna start with um, just sitting in a chair. You can sit on your couch, but if you're on your couch, I don't want you to sit back in the couch. Sit towards the front edge of the couch. Um, and you know, you can do this outside on your deck or anything. You just need two tennis balls, maybe golf balls. Golf balls are a little harder, so, but people have these things laying around. I have met people who said that they don't have anything like a tennis ball or a golf ball. So Kristen will show you that she has frozen a water bottle, um, and you can always use a frozen water bottle. Everybody gets a water bottle at some point of their lives, right? Even if we're trying not to use plastic. Um, Kristen and I are big um, non-plastic users. But there, it does cross our paths sometimes. So you could use a frozen water bottle. There's always something around inside of your house to help encourage you to take care of your body and to keep moving. So we're gonna go to our chairs and we're gonna start by massaging our feet with anything that you might have. She's gonna show you the water bottle, I'm gonna show you the tennis balls. And then we have some other things, like little bouncy balls, we have marbles, things like this. Just different things that you can use under your feet. So we have a little bit of a collection of them. So let's go to the chair, you can join us there. If you feel like it's hard to do both feet at the same time, and sometimes we'll find out that our inner thighs get tight because we're doing this, we're not used to this kind of movement. So you can start with one foot. There's nothing wrong with doing one foot. There's a lot of times that I tell my students that you could just do this while you're answering an email or watching the news or a funny show. I like to do this while I'm watching Big Bang Theory. So um, it's a good time for me to take care of my feet, right? There's, you don't have to think about a lot of things here. You just gotta roll and rub your foot back and forth. You can get inside the foot, on the heel. You can um, go across the toes. Each spot on your foot represents different parts of your body. And so if you feel like it's sore or tender or giving you sensation, you can start to find out more and more things about your health. I like to sit up in the chair. That's always really nice. So of course, if you have, um, if you are in a chair or in, you're bound to a wheelchair, um, there's students who come in here who are in wheelchairs. And what I do is I put a couple of blankets behind their wheelchair in them to kind of push them towards the edge. When you're in a wheelchair and you're back here and you're trying to do these kinds of exercises, this one might not be as bad because you're just rubbing your feet, but you're not gonna get a lot of pressure on the feet. So if it feels like it's too much, you know you can move back. But if you feel like you're not getting anything, you wanna move forward into the chair a little bit. So if you're in a wheelchair, 
it might be better to try to do some of these movements coming towards the front part of your wheelchair and we're not sure about it so that's okay you can put some blankets back here and then that way it will help you to sit up and you will feel more balanced in the chair and then that way you can get some more action out of your feet right got to keep our feet mobile right is one of the things that happens with CIDP is that your um, peripheral nerves start to lose some sensation and so the fingers and the feet are going to have um, a harder time having those signals because they're so far away from the spine and the brain so you want to make sure you're doing some more proactive stuff to make sure that you keep those areas of your body mobile getting blood flow you know lymph movement things like that because these are the things that keep us healthy and strong for moving so Kristen is going to ask me a question. So go ahead, Kristen, what's my first question? All right, so as many of our Pittsburgh walkers know, I've lived with CIDP since I was 14 years old, but I didn't come across Sterling until I was in my early 20s or so. So one of the things that I discovered when I started taking her classes was how beneficial restorative yoga was for me. So Sterling, can you explain why might a restorative yoga practice be helpful to someone who is living with a nervous system disorder? I would love to. So her question was, how can I um, give you the benefits of a restorative practice for somebody who's suffering from a nervous system disorder? Whether it's GBS, CIDP, PD, MS, whatever the initials are, we all have a nervous system that is taxed as our life goes on with different things. And they can be happy things. Like people think that if you're not stressed or like terrible things haven't happened to you in your life, that you don't have strain on your nervous system. But they can be happy things too, like a wedding. A wedding is really happy time, but it can also be a stressful time. And those are things that tax our nervous system, no matter what is going on for you. So if you already know that you're somebody who has something going on with your nervous system or your autoimmune system, then you wanna do some practices that support that. And a restorative practice supports the nervous system. A restorative practice is a practice where you are supported with props, you're in a safe space, it's dark, it's quiet, it's calm, and then we get to go into a, a relaxation mode, and then we um, can calm our breath down, we can relax our organs, we can relax our muscles, we can relax our mind, and then how is that not beneficial? We have tons of science behind all of these things about meditation being good for us, restorative being good for us, relaxation being good for us, and yet we push ourselves and push ourselves. So you have to make the time for it, but once you do, you'll see there's a ton of benefits to doing a restorative practice. And a restorative practice is a very relaxed practice. Like I said, it's dark, it's cold, it's, it's safe. You're not moving in a restorative practice. I've been to some restorative classes where they're doing cat and cow and stretches. That's just a gentle, softer class. It's like gentle stretching but it's not restorative. A restorative class that you're looking for, you do not move. You will typically do three to maybe five poses in a 75 minute to 90 minute class. So that's what you're looking for. Thanks, Kristen. All right, so let's just take these off to the side for a second. Now, the thing with um, the frozen water bottle, that's nice because if you have inflammation too, that's going to help with some inflammation. The other thing I like, and Kristen will show you too, we have these little like bouncy balls, marbles. You can get this in like the penny candy stores, right? I'm sure you probably have some of these laying around your house. But it's very interesting. If you put them down, you can try to pick it up between your big toe and your second toe, and then you extend your leg and put it down. <coughs> And you go to your other foot, you pick up your ball with your big toe and your second toe, you extend your leg and then bring it down. You can go over and then you try to get between the second and the third toe 
and you pick it up and extend the leg and then put it down. And then you take the second and third toe and you extend the leg. So this gives you some lengthening of the hamstring, gives you some contractions and the foot and things. So it helps move some muscles around the feet, right? And then we go over and we try to get between the third and the fourth toe. Oh, we pick it up. That one's a little bit harder for me. Good, but we don't know unless we practice. Maybe you don't even get it up off of the ground. That's okay. You can practice with pencils. Practice with crayons. Good. And then you try to go to the pinky toe and the fourth toe. Ah. <laughs> that one's really hard on that side. There you go. And then we put it down. So you'd be surprised. Some of you might be like, ah, my foot's cramping. <laughs> That's okay. That happens, right? But it shows you that there's hope, that there's a muscle that wants to be alive in there. And then you pick it up with the other side. Oh, I'm really stretching on that side to get that one to work. So my pinky toes need a little bit of help, but that's good information for me too, right? Because if I can't pick things up with my pinky toe, that means my bum is getting weaker and then it's starting to fall out and then my spine's starting to fall and then that's no good for us, right? So if you find out you can't pick up something with your pinky toe, that could give you information about what's happening with your glutes and your spine. All right, so let's take those and move them off to the side now. I'm just gonna do a couple of stretches. Again, like I said, the best way that you can help yourself, even just your core, is to come towards the edge of your chair, your wheelchair, anything, so that you're not always sitting back. When you sit back and our body finds that support, it has a tendency to want to start to slant, to slope, to lean, right? And not, and, and even people who don't have anything, you know, or disease or issue or illness or something going on, they, they, we don't even like to sit up straight. Right? It's hard. It takes a lot of muscle structure. So if you practice a little bit every day, you will by default be doing some work for your core. And that's always uh, um, good for us because what is right next to our spine? The nerves. So when the nerves are coming out of the spine, right, and we're slanting on it or we're pushing or dropping on it, you're putting pressure and strain on those nerves. And the more we sit up, and we create an openness for the nerves, the happier they are. So they'll function for us more and more properly, right? So make sure you're at the edge of your chair. If you have shoulder issues, you don't let your arms hang because then they become very heavy. You place your hands onto your thighs. If you have a torn rotator cuff or anything like that. Let's say if you do have a torn rotator cuff, you're not gonna get your arms all the way up over your head. That's okay. Then you start to direct yourself from underneath your armpits and you just inhale and lift up your chest and you exhale and just pull your elbows back. Like you can just like move your elbows out and pull them back a little bit and that'll give you some action. If your arms are able to go above your head, we want to practice this because it helps us from this poor posture that crushes down on our diaphragm and makes it hard to breathe. And when our body feels like it's labored and having a hard time breathing, it stresses out our nervous system. So we wanna take that stress and strain off the nervous system. So just three times a day, that's all it means. You could just take a nice deep inhale, reach your arms up, good, exhale, push the hands out. Don't just let them drop. Feel like the heel of your hand is pushing out to the side walls, so you can feel the stretch in the chest. You can feel the action in the arm. You can feel the strength in the back. Good, inhale, arms up. Good, exhale, press out through the hands. Push out through the hands. Good, inhale, arms up. Good, exhale, push out through the hands. Push out through the chest. See, even just three makes you start to feel like you're livening up the inside of the body, right? You can take your hands and place them onto your thighs if they're heavy, or you can continue to let them relax. Drop your chin to your chest. Come back to the center. I like to do things in the multiples of three. So if you want to do three, six, or nine, whatever, drop your chin to your chest. 
come back to the center. You'll find that especially if we're in a wheelchair or we're not walking as much as we'd like to, it's very easy for your chin to be down and your chest to be collapsed in. So the next time that you go to bring your chin to your chest, try to bring your chest up to meet the chin. Ready? And chin to chest, but you're bringing your chest up to meet your chin and come back to the center. Let's try three like that with the chest lifting to the chin. Ready? Chest lifting to the chin, drop your chin, center. Chest lift, drop your chin to your chest, center. Lift your chest, drop your chin to your chest, center. Good job. Then we're gonna just look over our right shoulder, come back to the center. Look over the right shoulder, come back to the center. Look over the right shoulder, come back to the center. Maybe each time you can see it just went a little bit further, just even a hair further. Look to the left, come back to the center. Look to the left, come back to the center. Look to the left, come back to the center. Good. Drop your ear to your shoulder. Come back to the center. Drop your ear to your shoulder. And you'll see, we have, this might be the side you slant to, so it's very easy for everything to drop. Try to push your bottom rib up to meet your ear. Center. Take your bottom rib and push it up to meet your ear. And center. Good job. Let's try that on the left. Drop your ear to your shoulder, you're like, oh wow, look how much I like dive in and even turn forward maybe, right? So come back to the center and the next ones, you're gonna think that this bottom rib is pushing up to meet your ear. And release. That this bottom rib is pushing up to meet your ear. Release. Good job. Let's take another couple of inhales real quick. Inhale, reach your arms up. Get your side body nice and long, tall. And then push out through the heels of the hands. Good. We're going to do that one more time. And this time when we get there, we're going to stop at shoulder height. So we inhale, arms up. Exhale, push out to shoulder height. Now here, we're going to make little circles forward. And you can follow Kristen, right, if you want to with your arms extended. But let's say that you have that torn rotator cuff. Maybe your hands are on your thighs and you're just picking your shoulders up and bringing them around, picking them up. Maybe you're like, maybe I'll try out here with my hands at my hips. Pick them up and roll them around. Maybe I'll try on the chair. Maybe I'll let my hands rest on the chair or on the thighs. Good. And then we're gonna go backwards. So now we're gonna go backwards for six, for five, but maybe you're here for four. For three, for two, for one. And we always like to end with them backwards because then that helps us stretch our belly and lift our chest, right? So that we're not dropping over top of the diaphragm. Because why? That puts strain on our diaphragm, which puts strain on our breath, which puts strain on our nervous system, right? So we wanna have nice posture. All right, what's a good way to get nice posture? Twist. And what's also a good reason for twists? They help us poop, right? Because if you start stirring up and twisting this belly, things start moving through easier. So if you're having any constipation or your belly hurts, or you feel like you've been slumping in a chair for a while, a chair twist or two could really help. Again, if your arms are not going up, I'd like to have you stretch your arms up each time because it keeps encouraging us to lift our rib cage up off of our hips, right? And good posture means better health, right? So we can lift the arms up, good. And we're gonna exhale and turn to the right. As we turn, we start to train or teach the body how to release our arms, but keep the chest lifted. Release the arms, but keep the chest lifted. 
Good. Inhale, arms up. Good. Exhale, turn. As you're turning, you want to feel like you're trying to twist your muscles around the spine, not just pulling your body around, not pulling your bone structure around. You want to try to imagine you're close to the spine, twisting into the spine. Inhale, arms up. Good. Exhale, turn to the right. Let the arms fall, but train the spine to stay tall. Look over your back shoulder. Good. Inhale, arms up. Good. Exhale, twist. Let the arms fall, but keep the spine growing tall. Look over your shoulder. Come back to the center. Inhale, arms up. Good job. And then press out. Don't forget about that push out because we can always come back here and it helps us create strength in our arms and our upper back. Nice. So Kristen, do you have another question for me? Ready for your next one? All I right. Am. So I know you don't consider yourself to be an expert. In fact, you describe yourself more as a lifelong learner. But what would you say to some, or your teaching helps so many people though, so I want to say that. But what Thank would you, you say to someone who is maybe interested in starting off in a practice, or they say they're, too, they're not flexible enough, or they're not strong enough, or like you've described a little already, maybe they have mobility issues. Sure. So there's always, there's a ton of classes out there. And I, yes, there are a ton of classes for healthy young people. And that is a majority of what we see out there. But you have to realize because we have a generation of people who weren't working out. And now that you guys are, we're going to learn and develop new things. So you're starting to see more chair yogas out there. You're starting to see more restorative. You're starting to see yoga classes with, in wheelchairs. Not that they haven't been around, but we're getting more visibility to them more visibility to yoga for Parkinson's, yoga for CIDP, yoga for MS. There's actual classes now for those kinds of um, things that are going on. So you can find them. There's books, there's tons of research and videos now for free on YouTube and things like that. So you can start with something, start small. I have to start small. I'm very flexible. So when she says, how about flexibility? Well, I have too much flexibility and I don't have enough strength. And so I hurt myself because of my ability to just have all this mobility, right? So that doesn't always mean it's so good for you, right? I have to learn how to build strength, but I had to do it very slowly because you can't do, that's one of our things. We think things are going to be fixed in six weeks or less. As a person with GBS and CIDP, you recognize this is now a lifetime practice as everybody in the world and everybody around should be thinking about it becoming a lifetime practice because we have to take care of ourselves. We have one body. You've probably already lived in four to six houses. You've already, probably already had 12 cars. This is one body. You have to try to start paying attention to it, taking care of it, learning about it, creating knowledge and movement around it. So you just start small and you just take little steps because we got lots of time anyways. So you just take little steps. So a nice one for me is to make sure that you're always working on your feet and your ankles, right? That's super important because without the mobility of our feet and our ankles, it is hard for us to move. This is why you see people who start to shuffle or they start to walk like this because they're not getting any mobility around the feet and the ankles. So if I can teach you one thing today or have you remember one thing, it's to take care of your feet and your ankles. So let's take our app, might as well get some app work in here too, right? It's a win-win situation when you can double up. So you're gonna take your belly and you're gonna lift your belly and your hamstring up to you. It's okay if you felt yourself go back, but recognize that because then that's your back and your quad pulling you up. And we wanna use our belly and our hamstring. So we pick up that foot and we just point and flex. And what did I tell you? Threes are good. Sometimes people are like, I can't do 12, that's okay. This could have been enough. You, maybe your leg's super heavy. Put it back down. That's okay. Then you go over here and you use this app. 
and you pick up this ab and you pick up this foot and you interlace or maybe you just hold on for dear life and you point and flex and it's not going to get any better if you don't do anything but it will get better if you start doing something right and my leg might have been really heavy when i first started these years ago but they're lighter and lighter as i keep practicing and then i'm like oh that's a lot so then you just go back and you can point and flex again for three. So you could get up to a cycle of nine or 12, but maybe it's not all at one time. And that's okay. The body learns from each round, right? And then you put that down and then you switch again. And then this way you're getting ab work too on top of it. So it's actually even a better bonus, right? Because every time you lift that leg, you have to work your ab. Good. And release. And then we come up one more time and we're going to make circles this time because ankle rolls are super important. Ankle rolls are important for you to try to keep mobility in the hip. So if your ankle's moving, your hip is moving. Good. And then switch directions. Now listen, this is why I love the Zen Den because I get to stay with you guys for three days for hours on end, I can teach you and talk to you about your body. But they only gave me 30 minutes today. <laughs> so release, switch, which we're encroaching on that time. So Kristen, do you have any other questions you would like to ask me? Well, since we're big talkers, these next few are going to be lightning round questions. So they're one word. Ooh, lightning left. round questions. Yes. Reverse your direction. I like that. Give them to me. What is your favorite yoga pose to teach? What is my favorite yoga pose to teach? I would say triangle pose, trikonasana. You can target a lot of your body and learn a lot of stuff about your body in that pose. And it's a good standing pose that helps us create balance and it helps us with stretching and strength, all the things you need in a yoga class, right? So I would say triangle pose. I knew it. <laughs> What is your hardest class to teach? My hardest class to teach is probably restorative because people get to lay down in poses and I'm constantly pushing and pulling on them and I'm putting sandbags on them because sandbags, weighted blankets, things like that are really good for your nervous system. So we use a lot of those here. So I do a lot of work in my restorative class. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was the answer too. People have a hard time relaxing in our busy world. Okay, yeah. the last one I have for you is, if someone were to only practice one thing for homework, what would you tell them to do? If I were to tell you to practice one thing for your homework, it would be to rub the balls underneath your feet and get some ankle rolls. I know that's kind of two, but they're really close and connected to each other. So I would say definitely take care of your feet and ankles. That's super important for movement and mobility. And then our posture, always looking at your spine. All right, so we only have a couple minutes left and I wanna make sure that we get at least a little bit of breath awareness and meditation in there because we'll be teaching some of that during the Zen Den too. When you're here in meditation though, you do get to relax. And didn't I tell you that when you sit at the edge of your chair, there's a lot of activity and action going in here. So you're gonna take your feet underneath you. You can hold on to the chair. We're gonna slide back until we get to the back edge of the chair. And we're sitting up nice and tall. And sometimes even that movement is hard for people. So you could practice things like that because it coordinates the abdomen with the body. Your feet are on the ground. I never like your feet off to the sides or crossed. Oh, crossing the legs, this is terrible, right? So I want you to have your feet on the ground. Let's say you can't touch the ground. Then go grab your telephone book and put the telephone book underneath your feet. Good, sit up nice and tall. Let your hands relax onto your thighs. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, feel like your body starts to relax into the props that you start to relax your eyes and you start to relax your face. Take a nice deep inhale in through your face. And as you exhale, feel like your face starts to soften, that you become expressionless. Take a nice deep inhale and feeling that breath climbing up your spine. And as you exhale, feel like your shoulders relax, 
that the weight we carry around on our shoulders starts to roll down the sides, falling off of our upper back, off of our shoulders. Take a nice long inhale, feeling it crawling up the spine. And as you exhale, feel like the exhale pulls the belly muscles back towards the spine. Inhale, feel the breath moving up the spine to the crown of the head. And as you exhale, feel like the breath comes spilling down over the skin, relaxing the skin, relaxing the muscles. Take a nice deep inhale in through the spine, all the way to the crown of the head. And as you exhale, feel that breath falling down the skin, softening our shoulders, relaxing the arms, relaxing the legs, the thighs, letting them become heavier to the chair. And then we're gonna keep it here for three breaths on our own. Just following the pattern of the inhales up the spine and the exhales coming back down the body and out through the toes. And with your next breath, we're gonna take a nice deep inhale. We'll slowly start to wiggle our toes and our fingers around, just moving our extremities a little bit. And then gently, with your eyes closed, just turn your head to the right, and then softly to the left. And you'll start to let the eyelids softly open when you come back to the center, just enough to let light in. And then taking a nice deep inhale, lifting your palms towards the sky. And as you exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart, bowing your head towards your heart, merging the mind and the heart together, bringing compassion through our thoughts and kindness out into our words. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you everyone for trying this out. I look forward to seeing you at the Zen Den. And we're going to have a lot of little tidbits, routines for you to take home. We're going to do long relaxations, meditations, breathing. We have so much in store for you. We're really excited. So hopefully we'll see you all in DC in October or another day, but we'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen, for having me as your guest. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that you're my teacher and I get to study with you every day right now. So Thank you. <laughs> I hope that everyone else will get to as well. <laughs> yes, hopefully. Thank you very much, GBS and CIDP Foundation. I appreciate you, I'm grateful for you, for giving this information out to everyone, and I hope that this is helpful to you. And until I see you again, namaste. Namaste.